So uh, I'm going to talk about our FY14 work. So we have a very strong team here, both at the SEI and in our collaborators. Uh, we're working with, uh, we've worked for many years with Dr. Uh, uh, Thomas Plum, who runs Plum Hall Inc. out of the uh, Big Island, Hawaii. We've worked with some, uh, uh, some, uh, some of the staff here at CMU and ECE and SciLab, and uh, some, uh, some PhDs at uh, Google and, uh, and elsewhere. Um, one of the things that I've been told I do well, but I, I guess it could be turned around as a criticism also, but is we, we've kept a very consistent vision in, in secure coding work over the past decade or so. Uh, so we've, uh, you know, Bill, Bill Fithin, is Bill Fithin here? So, so, so uh, w when I joined CERT, um, the Vol team had already been handling vulnerabilities for 15 years, and they noticed that people kept making the same mistakes over and over again. And they'd started a TR, but hadn't finished it. So I picked that work up and published it as the Secure Coding in C and C++ book. Uh, that got us involved in uh, language standardization in the C standards. Uh, and uh, Dr. Thomas Plum actually came to me at a, a standards meeting uh, in Berlin in 2006 and suggested CERT develop a secure coding standard for C. And I thought that was just a lovely idea. So we, uh, you know, a mere, well, you know, two editions and, and 10 years later, we've, <laughs> we, we've uh, made quite an investment impact in that area. And, and this has branched off into a bunch of things. Uh, you know, we now have pretty, uh, pretty wide adoption of these coding standards by companies such as Cisco and Oracle. Uh, a number of uh, defense contractors have also adopted these, but they've done that under NDA, so I can't tell you who they are. Uh, they, they seem to feel that gives them a competitive advantage. Um, and uh, so this work has created a, a, a sort of a, a, well, our scale analysis, which uh, is a collection of static analysis tools that we use to analyze code to see if it conforms to uh, one or more of the coding standards. And a lot of the research work I'm going to talk about today is in that yellow box. These are all uh, sort of capabilities we've tried to develop to enhance uh, our ability to analyze code for conformance with our coding standards. So one of these projects that's been ongoing for several years is our compiler and force buffer overflow elimination project. This is uh, led by David Keaton. He's the current uh, convener of the WG14C Standards Committee. And he's on a number of people's uh, top 10 list of parallel computing experts on the planet. Uh, so he's, he's, uh, he's sort of a bright guy. Uh, <laughs> Um, and uh, so he had two major contributions in this work. So one was to, um, to do some optimizations of the uh, Clang compiler to improve uh, the performance of buffer, uh, buffer overflow elimination, uh, basically by hoisting uh, checks outside of uh, loops uh, where they will only be uh, performed once instead of being performed on each iteration. Uh, and the second contribution is to uh, expand this work to work with uh, multi-threaded applications because both uh, C and C++ have had new standards in the last few years where they've uh, basically introduced uh, concurrency into the language and you know everyone's well aware that this is kind of an important new uh, you know I mean for 30 years people have been saying that uh, you know uh, concurrency is eminent, parallelism is eminent uh, I'm starting to believe it, <laughs> um, you know, and, and, and certainly uh, we're seeing the reaction from the language committees. They believe it and, you know, the entails and everyone else believes it. Um, so part of this work uh, was to um, basically to use uh, these, these object tables in order to uh, keep track of the base pointer and the bounds of all the objects to ensure that each, uh, each time you dereference the pointers within the bounds of the intended object. And uh, part of this was to perform those, perform the updates of that table atomically with lock-free programming so it could be done uh, efficiently enough to be, uh, you know, viable for real systems. So we have performance measures for the single-threaded uh, application of this. And what we've seen was we've been able to reduce the overhead by about 50%. So this allows the analysis of uh, more complex dynamic systems, but it's probably too slow for uh, runtime protection of a lot of performance sensitive uh, applications. Uh, typically, if you come to the C committee with 5% uh, overhead or, or greater, they sort of laugh you out of the building. So, so they're very, uh, 
you know, uh, very sensitive to performance. And, and, and when security and performance go up against each other, uh, security always loses. Um, it's kind of sad, but true. Uh, but one of the things that we're, we're looking is that uh, there, are, there is going to be planned hardware support for pointer tables in the uh, Intel Skylake processors. And once that hardware support is there, uh, this solution might actually become uh, quite viable for a wide range of uh, applications. Another project uh, that's uh, been managed by our, our two PhDs, Lori Flynn and uh, Will Kleber, along with the ECE staff, is this uh, uh, data flow for Android app sets. And so the problem here uh, is that you can have a number of uh, apps on your Android phone which are appear to be quite secure, but in collusion with another app, uh, they can uh, leak sensitive data from your phone, and that's largely undetected, particularly if you're uh, analyzing each app in isolation. So there's this problem with uh, what's called um, intents, which are basically messages passed between these components, uh, and, and existing analysis fails to detect uh, these data flows. So, uh, so our research team set off to uh, precisely detect these tainted flows across these multiple components and allow the user to uh, refuse to install the app or for the app store to maybe not install it. So this was the first published uh, static uh, taint flow analysis for collections of apps. And uh, they used basically a, a two-phase method, once where they, they initially analyzed the app, uh, say, before it goes into the app store. Uh, so they can uh, do stuff which is uh, uh, slow, <laughs> right? It's not time critical. Uh, and then when you go to install an app on your phone, it will then use this information to look at the collection of apps that you're now going to have installed and make sure there are no uh, sensitive flows between that particular collection. The next steps in this research is to add more precision with context sensitivity and uh, consequently have uh, fewer uh, false alarms, fewer false positives. The third project I'm going to talk about is uh, our C and C++ thread safety analysis. So this was a project that we uh, collaborated with with Google. Um, you know, um, I, I, it would have been great if a lot of that collaboration was then giving us bundles of uh, bundles of the money they have, but uh, <laughs> but we got the next best thing, which is um, uh, we we collaboratively developed. Um, uh, thread safety analysis for uh, C and C++ programs using uh, annotations that uh, originated in, in Bill Sherless's uh, Fluid Lab here at CMU. And, um, and so this is, uh, allows uh, potential race conditions and deadlocks to be detected. This has been implemented in Clang, which is a production quality uh, compiler available for most platforms. And you can uh, basically download and, and use this at your own organization today. So uh, the threat safety analysis has been deployed on a large scale at Google. It's uh, voluntary, but it's been widely uh, picked up. So people see the value of using it. And it's being used to develop applications that are used by you know, probably a billion people. So here's a chart of some of the scale assessments that we've performed over the past couple of years. Uh, it's an interesting chart, and, and a lot of people sort of find their organizations in this chart and start asking me questions. But I've, 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 I've mostly sort of uh, obscured the, uh, the specific groups which have developed these systems. So it's fairly anonymous. What I've done in each column, I've marked kind of the, the, the lowest value or, or kind of the worst value in red and the best value in green. And what I want to do is call your attention to uh, the B and C rows. So these are interesting because they are both uh, systems that were developed by commercial software vendors, and they were both written in C. And uh, the C row, you see, has uh, the highest quality, the, the, the least number of secure coding violations per thousand lines of significant code of any system we've looked at, uh, 0.03. And the row above it, and it's actually one of the, it's actually the largest system we looked at. Uh, the row above it, B, is another commercial vendor, also written C, and they have absolutely the worst uh, quality that we've seen, the most defects per thousand lines of significant code. So, so what's sort of interesting in that uh, there, I think, is that um, you know, although both these systems are developed in C language, and they're both developed by uh, industry, one is the worst and one is the best. And what that sort of gets to is that the real 
differentiator here is sort of the quality of the developers and, and their expertise in, in secure coding. Um, and so I, you know, so the good system, I'll go ahead and, and tell you that's uh, actually uh, the Android kernel uh, developed by Google and, and deployed by uh, DARPA TransApp. And the, the very horrible application, I, I won't tell you who wrote that because <laughs> that's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> Um, so here's just a list of publications that we've had. Uh, 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 it, we kind of had a slow year for books. I think we only wrote one. Um, I, my, my publisher's a little bit angry about that, but uh, I'm promising to get back on track. <laughs> um, and uh, one of the more significant accomplishments here is the uh, 17961 technical specification that we published uh, through the ISO IC Standards Committee. So that was a culmination of about seven years of effort. and um, uh, you know, untold hours of, uh, you know, really just, so, so, so the, the saying is, you know, if you go to the Olympics and you win the gold medal in nitpicking, you are allowed to join the C Standards Committee. Uh, so, <laughs> so, so, so this is sort of the level of effort that goes into these activities. Uh, okay, well, thank you uh, very much for your time.